Hey guys, this is Noah here with Learn Meta Analysis, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to get started using AI Assisted Data Extraction, our R package to help us extract data for systematic reviews and meta-analysis using large language models. So in this video, we are going to use Google Gemini. So I'm gonna show you how to get an API key and how to extract data with Gemini using this aid software. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is go to Google AI Studio. And once you're here, you're gonna see something like this. And getting an API key is really, really simple. All you do is go up here to the left and click on Get API Key. And when you get here, you're going to click Create API Key. Now, if you don't have any projects or anything, this should be really simple. It's gonna generate one for you and then you'll be able to copy it. Now, the thing that I wanna point out, and I was pretty paranoid about this when I set it up, is over here under Plan, you can see how it says Free. If you're on a paid account, then this can also say Paid. I wanted to make sure I used the free version because there is a free tier, but I just wanted to make sure I never got charged for it. So when I created this, I found that it took a little bit for it to actually update and say free. When I first created it, it didn't say that here. It just didn't say free. So what I found was that as I clicked through a few other things here and I was exploring the AI studio that Google has, um, when I circled back to this page a few minutes later, it did update and say free. Um, but that's just something to keep an eye on. For me, it was very important to make sure that this actually said I was on the free plan. Um, and like I said, that was very simple. All I did was click create API key. I didn't have any cloud projects or anything set up. So I just made sure that I circled back and that this said free before I started actually using it. So long story short, I have my free API key and we're just gonna copy that API key. Now, if you're not familiar with API keys, you need to keep that secure and private to yourself. Otherwise, other people can use your account. So keep that API key secure, I'm gonna, but for now, just copy it and we're gonna put it into the aid software here in a minute. And when you put it into our software, it actually saves it on your local computer. It doesn't save it to the cloud or anything like that. So we're gonna go to the setup page and you can see we're already by default on Google Gemini API. So we've already gotten our API key. So all you gotta do is copy paste paste that API key right here into the box and then hit validate. And this is going to ping their servers and just make sure that it's a valid key. And you can see if it goes to a green check mark, that means it is. Next, we're gonna choose our model. So we can choose between, or well, right now anyway, we can choose between Google Gemini 1.5 Flash and Google Gemini 1.5 Pro. Now, in our informal testing, uh, well, and our formal testing too, Pro did perform a little bit better than Flash, but it's also a little bit slower. And since we have a human in the loop, um, I'm actually going to use Flash because I'm gonna be double checking everything anyway. The rate limits on Flash are much more um, liberal in that we can have 1,500 requests per day, at least as of the time I'm recording this. Um, and with Pro, we can only have 50. Now granted, not many people are gonna screen and actually extract data from 50 papers in a day, but still, I just, I've really liked using Flash so far. So now that I've gotten this set up, I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna upload my coding form and I'm just gonna click the browse button and then it's gonna open on my other window. So I'm going to go ahead and select my form. This is an Excel file. And then it's going to tell me, hey, you need to select where you wanna save it. So I'm just gonna click the same file again when this pops up. And this actually popped up in my taskbar at the bottom of the screen. So you should watch because that may happen to you as well. And I'm just gonna choose that same file. Now I wanna show you what this file actually looks like now because the way you set this up is actually important. So. What this is going to do, the software is going to do, is it's gonna read in your first row of your form as prompts to the large language model. So I did not refine these prompts in any way, shape, or form. These are just things that I typed in uh, as I was experimenting. But I do wanna point out that the accuracy of your results is going to, in large part, depend on how well you have written your prompts. So you wanna make sure that your prompts are clear and structured in a way the LLM is going to be able to understand it. So here, here you can see my prompts are list the authors of this paper in APA format. What is the main focus of this document? It can be either pedagogical agents, educational games, or educational simulations. And then I specified that I don't want it to explain the answer. I just wanted to reply with the category. Next, I wanted to categorize what type of review this was. I want to know what the exclusion criteria for the study were. I want to know the implications for theory and the implications for practice. So now you have an idea of what my coding form is and what my prompts actually looked like. I'm gonna go ahead and close this file. Um, okay, so now we're ready to go ahead and go to the analysis phase. I'm going to first choose the file that I want to analyze. So this is going to be my study. 
that opened on my other screen. So I'm just gonna select my file here and you can see that it uploads it and it gives you a time estimate. After that, it's going to tell you the estimated context size of this document and your prompt. Now, this isn't as important for Gemini as it is for some of the other models because Gemini Flash has a 1 million token context size and Gemini Pro has a 2 million token context size. As you can see here, our total tokens are only about 20,000, so we will be in very good shape using Gemini. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit close here. And then I'm gonna go over and I'm gonna hit analyze PDF. But one thing that I wanna point out first is that it brought up all of our prompts from our coding form. It auto fills these in here for you so that you can see them. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna click analyze. It's gonna send the request to the API. It just sends one request with all of the information. And then you can see it's already done. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna close this window on the side here just to get a little more working space. And first we're gonna say, list the authors of this paper in APA format, and it lists our authors. If we ask it for the source, it's gonna tell us where it got that information. It's gonna say on page one. And then if it needs to jump down pages, it'll jump down pages automatically to get closer to it in the PDF reader. So let's see, it says Zhang, Jaldi, uh, Schrader, Lopez, Gladstone and Heidegg, so that's correct. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna hit record. Next, it's gonna say, what is the main focus? Uh, we can see here, if we ask it, it says it got the information from the title. And I know that this paper is about pedagogical agents. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna hit record as well. Next, what type of review? And we can see right from the title, it's a systematic review. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit record. Next, the exclusion criteria. So it did list all of our exclusion criteria here. I'm gonna ask it for its source. It says section 3.2, and you can see it jumped to closer in the document for me. So I'm just gonna scroll down to where 3.2 is. Studies were excluded if the PA was physically embodied robot. Okay, that's the first one. Second one, uh, examine the use of avatars. Yep, same exact wording. Third one, examine health-related outcomes. Perfect. Fourth, not published in English, great. Fifth, did not contain primary data, great. And last but not least, uh, it was not publicly available, excellent, so I'm gonna click record. Next, what are the implications for theory? So it gives us a brief description here and we can click on source. And I'm gonna scroll down and it says section 6.1, so it brought us closer, just not quite 100% there. So I'm gonna go to 6.1 and if I were actually doing this review, I would go through and I'd read this response that the LLM had and I'd read what was stated over here in the paper and I'd see if they match. But for the sake of conversation right now, one of the really important things in this document is the human in the loop. So I wanna show you how you can edit this information. All you need to do to edit this is simply highlight and then you can type in whatever you want. So you can say the implications for theory were awesome. And then I'm just gonna click record. And then we go down here and you can see the same things for implications for practice. It gives us a nice high level summary. And if we ask it for the source, it tells us where it got that information. I'm gonna go ahead and hit record as well. So you might be wondering right now, how do I make sure this actually went into my coding form? So I'm gonna go ahead and open up that coding form. And as you can see, it wrote down everything that we told it to write down and it put it in its own line, which is wonderful. Now, the one thing that I wanna point out just to show that it worked is for the implications for theory, this is the one that we changed and we changed to say the implications for theory were awesome and it did record that. So I'm gonna go ahead and close up my coding form now. And I'm gonna show you what happens if we wanna go to a new document. So all we do is we click on browse again, we upload a new paper. I'm just gonna upload the same paper for the sake of conversation. It tells us about our context size again. I'm gonna go ahead and close that. And I'm going to go ahead and click Analyze PDF. And I just wanna point out that it did clear out everything over here on the right-hand side. So I'm gonna go ahead and click Analyze and it should come up with very similar, if not identical answers. Um, but that doesn't really help me show, make a point. So I mean, it does make the point that this, this works pretty well. But the point that I wanted to make is that we can put other information in there. So I'm just going to put Study 2. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna click, I'm gonna put study two in every single box so that I can show you how this works on the coding form because this actually works very, very nicely. So I have study two there. I'm gonna click record, record, record. Uh, I'm not gonna record the exclusion criteria simply so that I can show you that it doesn't record it if you don't want it to. Okay, so now I'm gonna open up my coding form again. And here we can see on a fresh new line, we have study two, study two, study two, just like I typed in the box. The exclusion criteria question is empty because I did not click record. And the other ones are filled in with information as well. So that is pretty much it. You can have as many prompts as you want in your coding form. Um, and you probably won't run into too many in issues with this with using Google Gemini because the context window is so large, but it is very, very, very important that you have a human in the loop and you actually double check 
all the information extracted from these. And that is exactly why I built this system this way. You can see our current uh, paper on some of the accuracy we've had compared to human coders. But when you review that information, you'll see it is really important that you do actually double check this information. That said, this should greatly accelerate the data extraction process from systematic reviews. And I hope you find it super, super helpful. There are instructions on how to download this R package for free. Um, this is all free open source. Uh, you can download the R package from my GitHub page. And you can also, like I mentioned, using the Google Gemini API at this point is free as well. So you can use this 100% free to help you in your workflow. If you do use it, please make sure you cite the paper. Um, if this is helpful for you, please like and subscribe to the, uh, to the channel. Um, leave any comments if you find this helpful or if there's anything that was confusing, I'm happy to try and clarify. Thank you guys so much and good luck on your research synthesis adventures. Have a good afternoon.